Hello. Today I'm going to read the story of Benjamin Bunny, or the tale of Benjamin Bunny, by Beatrix Potter. It's a lovely old story, and another one that I used to read to my kids, and which my dad used to read to me. Now I have to tell you, towards the end of the story, there's quite a violent um, piece of discipline um, when someone gets told off fairly thoroughly. I have to say that that's not the sort of discipline that we use in our houses, but it may be the sort of discipline that rabbits used to use in theirs. Here we go then, the tale of Benjamin Bunny. One morning a little rabbit sat on a bank. He pricked his ears and listened to the trit-trot, trit-trot of a pony. A gig was coming along the road. It was driven by Mr McGregor and beside him sat Mrs McGregor in her best bonnet. As soon as they'd passed, little Benjamin slid down the road and set off with a hop, skip and a jump to call upon his relations who lived in the wood at the back of Mr McGregor's garden. That wood was full of rabbit holes and in the neatest, sandiest hole of all lived Benjamin's aunt and his cousins Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail and... Peter. Old Mrs Rabbit was a widow. She earned her living by knitting rabbit wool mittens and muffetees. I once bought a pair at a bazaar. She also sold herbs and rosemary tea and rabbit tobacco, which is what we call lavender. And there she is, hard at work in her kitchen, with Flopsy, Mopsy and Cottontail. Goodness only knows where Peter is. Little Benjamin did not very much want to see his aunt. He came round the back of the fir tree and nearly tumbled upon the top of his cousin Peter. Peter was sitting by himself. He looked poorly and was dressed in a red cotton pocket handkerchief. Peter, said little Benjamin in a whisper, who's got your clothes? Peter replied, the scarecrow in Mr McGregor's garden, and described how he'd been chased about the garden and had dropped his shoes and coat. There's Peter in his pocket handkerchief. He does look a bit sad, doesn't he? Little Benjamin sat down beside his cousin and assured him that Mr McGregor had gone out in a gig, and Mrs McGregor also, and certainly for the day, she, because she was wearing her best bonnet. Peter said he hoped that it would rain. Uh, they both are the two mischievous boys. At this point, old Mrs Rabbit's voice was heard inside the rabbit hole calling, Cottontail, Cottontail, fetch some more chamomile. Peter said he thought... He might feel better if he went for a walk. They went away hand in hand and got upon the flat top of the wall at the bottom of the wood. From here they looked down onto Mr McGregor's garden. Peter's coat and shoes were plainly to be seen upon the scarecrow, topped with an old tam shanter of Mr McGregor's. There you go. Can you see the two rabbits on top of the wall? looking down at the scarecrow, made with Peter's clothes. Little Benjamin said, It spoils clothes to squeeze under a gate. The proper way to get in is to climb down a pear tree. Peter fell down head first. There he goes, falling down. But it was of no consequence as the bed below was newly raked and quite soft. It had been sown with lettuces. They left a great many odd little footmarks all over the place, especially Benjamin, who was wearing clogs. Little Benjamin said that the first thing to be done was to get back Peter's clothes in order that they might be able to use the pocket handkerchief. They took them off the scarecrow there had been rain during the night and there was water in the shoes and the coat was somewhat shrunk. 
Benjamin tried on the tam shanter but it was too big for him. There you go. Peter trying to squeeze back into his jacket. Benjamin trying on the tam shanter All a bit of a, a kerfuffle, isn't it? Then he suggested that they should fill the pocket handkerchief with onions as a little present for his aunt. Peter did not seem to be enjoying himself. He kept hearing noises. Benjamin, on the contrary, was perfectly at home and ate a lettuce leaf. He said that he was in the habit of coming to the garden with his father to get lettuces for their Sunday dinner. The name of little Benjamin's papa was Old Mr Benjamin Bunny. The lettuces certainly were very fine. Peter did not eat anything. He said he should like to go home. Presently he dropped half the onions. Can you see there the onions spilling out of the pocket handkerchief as Peter loses interest a bit? Not good. Little Benjamin said it was not possible to get back up the prayer tree with a load of vegetables. He led the way boldly to the other side of the garden. They went along a little walk of planks under a sunny red brick wall. The mice sat on their doorsteps cracking cherry stones and they winked at Peter Rabbit and little Benjamin Bunny. Presently, Peter let the pocket handkerchief go again. That's one of my favourite illustrations in Beatrix Potter. Can you see the last of the onions spilling out of the, out of the handkerchief and falling down? Peter really isn't very happy at all, is he? They got amongst flower pots and frames and tubs. Peter heard noises worse than ever. His eyes were as big as lollipops. He was a step or two in front of his cousin when he suddenly stopped. There he is. Can you see the little robin um, checking him out again, just like he did yesterday in the tale of Peter Rabbit? And can you see little Benjamin in the background too? So Peter had suddenly stopped. And this is what those little rabbits saw around that corner. Little Benjamin took one look and then in half a minute less than no time he hid himself and Peter and the onions under a large basket. The cat got up and stretched herself and came and sniffed at the basket. Perhaps she liked the smell of onions. Anyway, she sat down upon the top of the basket. She sat there for five hours. Trying to get you a good pick. There you go, there's a good look of her. Sadly, I can't draw you a picture of Peter and Benjamin underneath the basket because it was quite dark and because the smell of onions was fearful. It made Peter Rabbit and little Benjamin cry. The sun got round behind the wood and it was quite late in the afternoon, but still the cat sat on the basket. At length there was a pitter-patter, pitter-patter, and some bits of mortar fell from the roof above. The cat looked up and saw old Mr Benjamin Bunny prancing along the top of the wall of the upper terrace. There's old Mr Bunny. He looks quite handsome, doesn't he? He's smoking a pipe as well. Not sure about that. He was smoking a pipe of rabbit tobacco and had a little switch in his hand. He was looking for his son. Old Mr Bunny had no opinion whatever of cats. He took a tremendous jump off the top of the wall onto the top of the cat and cuffed it off the basket and kicked it into the greenhouse, scratching off a handful of fur. The cat was much too surprised to fight back. There he is leaping off the wall onto the cat with his switch in his hand. Goodness me, quite terrifying if you're the cat and really big surprise as well.
When old Mr Bunny had driven the cat into the greenhouse, he locked the door. Then he came back to the basket, took out his son Benjamin by the ears and whipped him with a little switch. Then he took out his nephew, Peter. There he is, using his switch. Not good. Then he took out the handkerchief of onions and marched out of the garden. There he is, marching out of the garden with his nephew and his son running ahead, not looking very happy, are they? When Mr McGregor returned about half an hour later, he observed several things that perplexed him. It looked as though some person had been walking all over the garden in a pair of clogs, only the footmarks were too ridiculously little. Also, he could not understand how the cat could have managed to shut herself up inside the greenhouse, locking the door on the outside. When Peter got home, his mother forgave him, because she was so glad to see that he'd got his shoes and coat. Cottontail and Peter folded up the pocket handkerchief, and old Mrs Rabbit strung up the onions and hung them from the kitchen ceiling with the bunches of herbs and the rabbit tobacco. The End